everyone myself dr rashmi prasad working as an associate mm-hmm. professor in the department of data science in institute of aeronautical engineering hyderabad in this video i'm going to discuss about what are the different types of graphs that are available in statistics so in previous video i covered what are the types of charts that are available uh, in uh, statistics now i'm going to discuss what are different types of graphs that are available in statistics so very first thing should be histogram so histogram what is the histogram means that so histogram is nothing but a graphical representation so that should be helpful to organize and display the data so in more uh, user friendly environment so the uses of histogram is that should it should be helps in comparing the process uh, within the specified limits and it summarizes the large data and it assists in decision making also so histogram so it should be a graphical representation so of uh, any kind of data but some mainly this one is going to be used for representing the statistics and no mainly this one is going to be used on the organizing and display the data uh, in a user friendly environment and main uses of this histogram is that so it should be able to compare the process within the specified limits and it should be summarizes the large data and then it assists in decision making so these are the different types of uh, users that is going to be used and suppose if i'm going to consider a data like this so i'm going to have a class interval uh, which should be at the prices range of pens and then it should be the frequency here i'm going to be considered the only difference between the bar chart is that so if i'm going to consider the bar chart so we have to maintain the space between them and that is one of the difference between the uh bar chart and when comes to histogram so here we should not maintain any kind of spaces now uh, between them while representing the bars so at the same time here i'm going to be in uh, specify the interval limits here so but here i'm going to be specify the uh, variables so what i'm going to be represented so these are the differences uh, between the bar chart and then histogram so so while constructing this histogram so i'm going to be consider the interval uh, range of pens 20 to 30 30 to 40 40 to 50 and 50 to 60 so in between then so how many number of pens that are available in between the interval it should be 15 and similarly for 30 to 40 how many it is and 40 to 50 and 50 to 60 so like this i'm going to be consider the frequency of that one so after considering this then we have to be construct the histogram like this so here i'm going to be considered in between uh, 20 to 30 what should be the interval and 30 to 40 and then 40 to 50 and then 50 to 60 so these are the intervals what i'm going to maintain so in between the intervals so how many number of pens that are available so in between the 20 and 30 i'm going to be have 15 so i'm going to be mark with 15 here and no space in between the bar should be maintained and in between the 30 and 40 so here it should be around that uh, 20 here so i'm going to be represented 20 and between uh, 30 to 40 it should be around 30 so i'm going to be represent 30 in 15 and 20 and in between the 15 and 60 it should be uh, like uh, 25 so like this i am going to be represent the histogram here so this is the one kind of graph where i am able to represent the data in statistics and very uh, widely used one so we should be in uh, many kind of applications also <laughs> Uh, let's take an uh, another set of uh, data. What I'm going to have? Suppose if I'm going to have the data like this, so set of numbers I'm going to have. So for this, how do we construct the histogram? So for that, what I have to do is so first we have to be specify the uh, interval. So then after interval, so find out the frequency here. So how many number of times that it The number is going to be four in between intervals. So for that, I'm going to be considered so 15 to 20. It should be of equal interval. I'm going to maintain here. So 20 to 25, 25 to 30, 30 to 35, 35 to 40, 40 to 45, and 45 to 50. So now I'm going to be uh, 
uh, take one by one number and then which uh, it is going to be fall in that one. Suppose 24 if I am going to take, so 24 may be fall in this category, so I am going to mark as 1. And next one is 17, so I am going, 17 is going to be marked here. <coughs> And next one 14 here, so 14 again going to mark and then 22, so 22 is going to become in this category and 25 again here, 26 here, 38, so 38 uh, may become in this category and 42 should become in this interval and then 47 should be like this and 24 and again 24 may which should be again in this category, 12 again, so 12 uh, it should be not be there in between the two, so it should be in that one and 28 uh, and then 19 so 28 and here 28 and then 19 uh, may come in this interval so like this I have to mark all these values which may be coming to each interval and find out these values so how many frequency it is so 4 so 4 numbers are going to be fall in this interval and similarly 5 counts so 4, 3 sorry 2, 2, 1 and 2. So like this I have to be uh, finding out those values in between the intervals. So once this you know, we know this interval and then frequency so then we can easily construct this histogram here. So by taking the intervals on x-axis and the frequency on the y-axis and intervals should be here. That should be on x axis. So, like this, I have to be taken out and we, uh, know the value that should be 15 to 20, it should be 4. So, mark with 4. So, that should be one of the bar. And in between the interval 22 and 25, it should be 5. So, I'm going to be drawn like this. And in between 25 to 30, it should be like this. And 30 to 35, it should be 2. So, 2. So, like this, I can easily construct the histogram by knowing this uh, intervals and then frequency. So, the, word is, the only difference between the bar chart and pie chart is that. So, in bar chart, you have to maintain the space between the bars and uh, at the same time, each and bar is going to represent some single attribute here. But here in histogram, it should be the class intervals, how much it is, you have to be identified. <laughs> And next one is that frequency polygon. So this is the other kind of uh, uh, data visualization. So what is this frequency polygon? So this graph, this is a graph that should be uses lines and then that should connect the points for the frequencies at the midpoints of the classes. And the frequencies are represented by the height of the points. So okay. So the frequency polygon is nothing but a graph for which is going to be used lines here that connect the points plotted for the frequencies at the midpoint of the classes and these frequencies are going to present the height of the points so that should be the polygon so this polygon may be constructed only after the construction of this histogram so how to construct this frequency polygon after constructing the histogram is that so after joining the midpoint of the classes of the histogram so the line what we obtain that should be treated as the frequency uh, polygon here. Okay, so in order to construct this uh, set, uh, uh, let's see these points, what are the steps you have to be considered for this. So first find out the midpoints of the H class and second one draw an X and Y axis and label the X axis with midpoint of each class and use a suitable scale for the frequencies on y-axis and using the midpoints on uh, for the x-axis and the frequencies as y values now plot the points and connect the adjacent points with the line segment so where you can able to draw a line back to the x-axis at the beginning and the end of the graph here so where the next midpoint should be would be located so these are the steps what we have to be considered here so for the first thing is that so first we have to be identify the midpoints of the H class. So here uh, if I'm going to construct this, so it is let us assume that this is the histogram and sharing what we are going to have. So from this histogram, uh, first we have to identify the midpoint of this class and 50 to 20, 20 to 25, 
25 to 30 and then 30 to 35. So very first thing you have to identify midpoints of the each interval of the class and draw the x-axis and y-axis. So this and x and y-axis and label the x-axis with midpoint of the class with a suitable scale for the frequency of that. And using the midpoint for the x values and the frequencies along this uh, y values, so connect the adjacent point with the line segment. So make use of the scale and then connect connect this midpoint of each and every midpoint of the uh, rectangle that should be middle mid midpoint. So the line what we obtain this uh, that should be treated as the frequency polygon. Okay, let's see the example. So, how to construct this? So, I'm going to have a uh, frequency polygon, how to be constructed for 642 psychology text scores, which is going to be shown in figure that should be constructed from the frequency table. And the frequency distribution of the psychology test will be appear like this. So, the very first thing is that lower limit I'm considering, like 29.5, 39.5. And upper limit should be 39.5 and then again 39.5, 49.5 like this I am going to be constant. Uh, by taking some of the values of the count in between this intervals, so these are the values I got it and then the cumulative count I am going to be calculated. So how this cumulative point is going to be calculated, so actually it should be 0. So after adding 3, it should be 3 and then I have to add 3 and then 10, so I am going to get 13 here. So next one, so like this we have to be add all the cumulative values right. And next one 13 plus 53, how much it should be 66 right. And 66 plus 107, that should be 173. And 173 plus 147. And then 320, so 320 plus 130. So like this, I can able to get all the uh, cumulative values here. So after getting this cumulative values, so what I have to do is, so we have to be forced label on the x-axis is 35, and then this should be the interval in between case 29 to 35.5, and all the points is going to be labeled, and then have to be construct the frequency polygon easily. So where you can able to make the shape of this distribution should be and most of the scores in between 65 to 115 I can also be clearly uh, discussed here. So after taking this interval, so what I am going to do, so how these values are going to be obtained here is that, so very first thing this should be the interval point. So in between the interval, so how to first find out this middle point of this histogram. And like this I have to add, uh, draw all the midpoints of this all the histogram. Uh, after noting this, uh, so let's see how it should be next, it should be like this. And again it should be interval. And in between this interval, so what should be the midpoint of this and again the midpoint of this one. So this should be the actual one. So after uh, removing all this, uh, so after joining, uh, after identifying this midpoint of each and every bar, so after joining the midpoints with a smooth line, there should be the frequency curve. So after removing all these rectangle bars, what we are going to have, so then it should be becomes the frequency polygon of this application. So this should be way uh, we are unable to construct the frequency polygon here. <laughs> and next one is OGU. So this is another way of representing uh, data visualization for uh, uh, statistics here. So what is OGU? So OGU is nothing but a graph. So it should represents the cumulative frequency for the classes in the frequency distribution. 
so main, mainly this occur mainly when for the cumulative frequencies normally previous thing is that so uh, that should be frequency polygon so that should be constructed from histogram right so once we constructed histogram by taking the frequencies so occur is the thing where uh, where you can able to be construct the fre cumulative frequencies of the classes based so normally this ogi is going to maintain constant by considering cumulative frequency polygon here so how to construct this argument so first you have to be identify uh, the cumulative frequency of each class so previous example i told how to calculate this uh, cumulative frequency right uh, like this we have to be um, construct the cumulative frequency table first and then again draw the x and y axis and label the x axis with the class boundaries and label the x y axis with appropriate frequency and then plot the cumulative frequency at each upper class boundary and start with the first upper class boundary and then connect the adjacent points with the line segment and extend the graph to the first lower class boundary on the x axis so if i'm going to have a table like this so previous example i'm taking so from the cumulative frequency what i am going to do so first construct the uh, cumulative frequency of each class and then we have to be drawn x and y axis and the label x axis 0 to 10 and then 10 to 20 and then 20 to 30 30 to 40 i have to map it out the all the uh, class interval and label the axis uh, y axis with appropriate frequency values and then plot the cumulative uh, frequency at each upper class boundary okay and start with the upper class boundary connect the adjacent point with the line segments so how to construct the cumulative in similar fashion can able to construct it and extend the graph to the first lower boundary on the vac axis let's see how to construct this so uh, constructing the statistical graph general procedure normally so draw the labels first so where you can able to construct the x-axis and y-axis and suitable scale uh, for the frequencies or cumulative frequencies in hard to be constructed here so based on this i may can able to construct the argue and represent the class boundaries uh, for the histogram and then uh, where are the midpoint of the frequency for on the x-axis so uh, plot the points and then draw the bars and then lines so here what i'm going to do is so first you have to be representing the class boundaries for the histogram or audio or to be able to call or the midpoint of the frequency on the x-axis and plot the points such a way that you can able to draw the uh, bars on lines here so that is the general procedure what going to be followed here so example I'm going to be taking here is that the following data is going to have some weights in kilograms of 20 people and for this, uh, this is the data I'm going to have. So these are the weights of four different people where I can gather and then what I'm going to do. So I'm going to place this data as a stem and leaf plots uh, where I'm able to organize and then analyze the group of data and this is not that much necessary step. Uh, so what I'm going to do is that so I'm going to take stem and leaf graph. So in previous idea how to construct this uh, stem and leaf graph also I explained here. So stem means or uh, uh, what should be the second digits values. So like so five is there, six is there, seven, eight, and then nine, and then ten I'm considering. So among these values I'm going to be considered this five, six, seven, eight. And 9, 10 should be the stem values and leaf should be the uh, digits in the values that should be followed through the stem. Suppose if I'm going to take 0, so 0 is going to follow the stem, so I'm going to mark this here as 0. And similarly, next one is 5. So 5 is going to be as a leaf of 6 and then 5 again and then 0. And again, some some of the other values what I'm going to follow through the stem 8, right? So 0 is there, then 5, and under 5, and then 6, 6, and then 7, 
So these are the stem uh, leaf values that should be followed to the stem 8. So similarly for the stem 9, what are the values? So 0, 2 and 8. So 0 to 8 and then 10 should be 5. So like this, you have to be uh, construct the stem leaf graph normally. So normal, normally this one is not that much needed here. And once you construct this, so how to speci um, specify this interval value. So in between 40 to 50, what should be the weights? And 50 to 60, what should be the weight? And 60 to 70, what are the weights? And then 70 to 80. So like this, I am going to be specify the some intervals here. So once the intervals is specified, then I have to be know how many number of values are there in between 40 and 50, 50 and 60. So let's take 40 and 50, there should be any value, no, in 50, 50 and 60. So one, so only one, and so between 60 and 70, it should be one, and between 70 and 80, it should be one, and between 80 and 90, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight are there. So like this, I have to be. Uh, note down the frequent tally values and then frequency values how many it should be totally and then how to construct the cumulative frequency so make this values uh, here so how many i can able to tally values so put the data in the form of table we'll start with tallies here so here note down the counts how many number of there and then mention in the Third step, so put the frequencies by which the events occur. So note down the values. One here it is also one C. When it should be five plus three, that should be eight, three, one. So these are the frequencies values. So after calculating the tally values. So once the frequencies is done, so how to be calculate the cumulative frequency? That should be the fourth step here. So that means so mm, how to calculate the cumulative frequency? It should, it should be one. So here also one. And here also 0, so 1 plus 0, 1. And then 1 plus 1, how much? It should be 2. So 2 should be the cumulative frequency. And again, 2 plus 1, how much? 3. 3 plus 8, 11. And 11 plus 3, 14. 14 plus 1, 15. <coughs> well, like this, uh, we are going to be uh, calculate this cumulative frequency of any kind of application. So based on the cumulative frequency, we have to be draw the uh, histogram, uh, what we call it as OQ. So in between the 40 and 50, what should be this? And 40 and 50 and 60. So normally 40 and 50 and then 50 and 60, 60 and 70, 70 and 80, 80, 90 like this. So after drawing this, so what are the values? So in between 40 and 50, it should be 1. And then in between 50 and 60, it should be 1 and 60 also 1, 70 it should be 2, 80 it should be 4 and then 90 it should be 11 and then 100 it should be 14, 110 it should be 15. So like this we have to be take it out and then what I am going to do, we have to be uh, join all the points with their line so that should be the overview of the graph. So normally while constructing this, we have to do all the time, we have to be start with zero when then the second coordinate should be the end, end of the first interval and third coordinate should be at the end of the second interval. So like this, we have to be construct the OQ graph. And another graph, what I'm going to have representing that uh, data visualization is that pictogram. So pictogram is that, so pictogram or it should be other name is that pictograph. So where it should be represent the frequency of the data as the pictures or symbols. So each picture or symbol may represent one or more units of the data here. So the pictogram is the thing, uh, uh, is one kind of graph. What is the other synonym is the pictograph. So where it should be represent the frequency of the data in the form of pictures or I can able to represent the form of symbols. So where each picture and symbol may be represent one or more units of the data. So like some uh, constraint I want to represent and the number of power C in charge road I want to represent. So at the time, so this Ford model, how many number of parts and Toyota, Renault, Ferrari. So where can I able to represent where the power symbol is going to mention here. So uh, uh, let's see, I have seen about three, so three parts I have to specify. 
I have seen three under four cards and I have seen four prior cards. So where everything should be present in the form of a picture here. So that's why it should be called as a pictogram or it should be called as a pictograph. So let's see the example how to construct this. So the following table shows the number of uh, computers sold by the company for the uh, in the month of January to March and then construct a pictograph on the table. So month should be January, February, March. Number of computers in January is 25. February it should be 35 and March it should be 20. So this is the data what I get it. So number of computers sold by the company in the months of January to March. So how to construct the pictograph uh, for this table? So how to construct this? So I'm going to take so January to February, January to March, right? So January, February, and March. So in January it should be 25, 35, and 20. So like this, I'm going to represent. So in January, so instead of representing this entire 25 system, so what I'm going to do is, so each system is going to be represent five computers. So if I'm going to represent five, so I can simply able to draw the five diagrams. So which is means that so I have to multiply five systems where each diagram is equal to five, so twenty five. Similarly here one to three, four, five, six, seven. So seven into five, thirty five. So four into five, twenty. So like this also I can able to represent the pictogram or pictograph here. So this is another way of representing this pictogram. And finally, what are the advantages and disadvantages here? So it should be easy to read and then visually appealing. So these are the advantages of the pictogram. And disadvantages is that so it should be uh, very difficult to draw. So because what is the picture is there, so that thing is presenting a uh, little bit uh, difficult when compared to previous graphs. And Icons should also be in a consistent size and then uh, best only for two to six categories and very simplest. So these are the some of the disadvantages of pictogram. Okay, so it should be difficult in drawing is the one of the problem and then uh, icons must be of uh, consistent of you know, different size and not best for the uh, two to four categories only. That should be one of the drawback and very simplest. Okay, so these are the some of the various uh, graphs that are available here for representing in statistics. So here uh, I covered the very first thing is that histogram. So histogram is nothing but a graphical representation uh, of something uh, where you can able to organize and display the data in user and the environment. And user should be mainly this one is going to be used mainly for the comparing the process, and it should be summarizes the large data and then it should also assist uh, in decision making. So these are the three ad uh, advantages or uses it may be what we call in for any kind of application. So for constructing this histogram, so very first thing we have to know the class interval and uh, how many number of frequencies that is going to be for each category we have to be find out. So the only difference between this bar graph and then pictogram is that so the difference be, here the graph um, space should be maintained in bar graph where it should not be maintained any space between the bars and here the intervals is going to maintain but here the independent variable or attributes are going to be constrained. So this is the view of histogram how to construct this. So by taking the class intervals and x-axis and frequency values along the y-axis. So by taking this application, find out the tally values and then find out the frequency. So once you know the frequency, so construct the histogram, that should be simple. And next one is frequency polygon. So this is the other way of data visualization. It should be helpful. So after constructing the histogram only. So normally this one is going to be used by, by it's drawing a simple line, joining the points of all the uh, histogram bars. So for this, what I have to do, I have to first find it out without uh, midpoints of each class and then uh, find out these uh, points along the midpoints of each and every bar on the histogram and join all the points with a straight line. So next, uh, what we can able to call is that 
cumulative frequencies. So cumulative frequencies is mainly if I want to represent then uh, or give is the data visualization and if it is going to forward frequency then it should be go for histogram or I can able to go for uh, frequency polygon. And OGIV, so OGIV is the main strategy, is also a graph which is going to be uh, represent the cumulative frequency of the class and frequency distribution. And in order to construct an OGIV, so first you have to be know the cumulative frequencies values. So how the histogram is constructed in a similar fashion, you can able to construct the OGIV also, where the, what we call it as a, a cumulative frequency polygon. So, Cumulative polygon means we are able to take only the frequency values. So, cumulative frequency polygon means we have to take cumulative frequency values. The graph, what we obtain, is called as OG. Okay, so there should be some of the guidelines we have to be for constructing this. So, suppose if I am going to have a data like this, then we have to be first uh, construct a stem and leaf graph. So, what should be stem and leaf graph means? So, the leading should uh, digit should be treated as a uh, leaves and then preceding digit should be treated as a stem. So based on that we have to construct the stem and leaf graphs. So once you identify this then you can able to fill in the frequencies values. So from the frequencies values you can simply able to calculate the cumulative frequency. So the very first thing is that so put your data in the form of table start with tallies and the third step is that put the frequencies uh, by which the events is going to be occur. So once the frequencies is done, then you have to calculate the cumulative frequencies. And finally, uh, construct the OGIV graph. So these are the steps you have to be followed for that. And last thing, what I explained is the pictogram. So a pictogram is a present the frequency of the data in the form of pictures or in the form of symbols. So where each picture or symbol is going to represent one or more units of the data. So on that way of this, suppose I'm going to have uh, number of computers sold in the last three months. So for this, I can able to construct this kind of pictogram. So it specifies that each and every symbol is going to represent five computers. So instead of representing 25 computers in a pictogram, it should be difficult to construct it, right? So in order to avoid that, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make convention for uh, each sim icon is representing the file. So for that, instead of 25, I'm going to present just five. So that should be the advantage of pictogram. So advantage is it should be easy to read and visual appealing and disadvantage is it should be difficult to draw and icons must be of consistent size and best only for categories and should be very simplistic. So these are the disadvantages. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.